check the last question first. It's, I don't see it as the right of the journalist. I think, uh, but the way I was trained, uh, and I say that because I see a lot of journalists who give journalism a bad name, um, that I am there writing for the public. So I think. questions because if you talk about national security it's it's not a concept out in space national security involves us which is the public so how do you separate you know how can the state say that one is more than the other you know because you expect and this is where the accountability aspect comes in you expect the state to act in the best interest of the public now it's only when they're not doing so that the public says we have an interest in knowing what's happening. Right? So that's where you have this then judges will sit down and decide, okay. You know, but the way the law is drafted in most countries, uh, like in US, the, the law that they cited, you you have to reveal your source. The court can order you to do it and you have to do it. Uh, we don't have a law protecting us in any way in Malaysia, you know, so you just do it and then hope that nothing happens, and if it does, then, you know, just go with it. So this right, um, I think how we couch the questions as well, if you say that uh, it's a journalist right, then you're missing the point, because I'm not working for myself. I hope that the job that I'm doing is for the people, and I think they make the point as well where, you know, Alan Alda says that this is not the old days anymore where people don't see the media as uh, the white knights. The they white knights. Instead, they see you today as dragons. Maybe I could see it as professional, right? Rather than a personal, right? A professional as a journalist. Even no. then, no. no. Because everything I do in the work, so, okay, as I said, I've spoken to journalists, and those days when I used to speak to members of the public as well, I keep telling them, I said, you keep asking us why we don't do investigative journalism. So I said, how do you expect me to do this? Do you expect me to manufacture information out of nothing? Okay, this is before the internet. Okay, mind you, I've been doing this for 23 years. So I'm talking about the time where the public allowed parliament, I won't say the government, which is, you know, parliament is only one arm of government, allowed parliament to tighten the screws on the media. You know, and then you turn around and tell, ask me why I'm not doing my job. But you've just tied my hands. I want to do my job. So you should, come election time, grill your MPs or candidates, you know, those who are standing there, and ask them, what is your position on this issue? What is your position on media freedom? You know, what is your position on, on uh, religious freedom? Whatever issues are important for you. You should get it out of them and tell them point blank, this is important to me. And if you don't vote that way, or, I mean, you can't force people to vote either way. You know, but at least you know the position of the person. And the candidates also know, hey, this is a burning issue with society, you know. They're all not browbeaten by the government and they're not afraid of the government. They want to know what's happening. It's not just parking fees going up by 20 cents. So, you know, we're talking about big things here. Uh, so you have to take responsibility as well. Sorry, can I just uh, add on a little bit to what you said? Because talking about changing a different government and about certain things, because I, feel it, I believe that no government wants to give a free media to people. That's, that's a pinpoint blank thing. Even our opposition can come into place I don't believe in a fear of They've been banning reporters yes, as well. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. For me, as long as media reporters, editors, media groups, they are still obliging themselves to this laws, these laws are going to stay. It's when, from a personal point of view, I believe these laws can be screwed out is when journalists, media groups, take a stand and, and, and question and actually 
go against the flow against this law and I, I, that's why I believe Rachel took a personal stand in that she, she did not want to recognize such laws she did not want to endorse such laws and in her point of view she fought it so as long as we are going to oblige ourselves to such laws these laws are going to stay these are the laws which is going to be applied to us so well, if, I suppose other than um, that went to court where you got details on defence contracts and this is going back to you know, the mid 80s or so. Okay, so they came down hard on him. But otherwise also you see the, the other thing the government did one tie our hands, it did the same thing with the civil service because before that the civil servants were sharing information. Then they amended the OSA so that now a civil servant can be charged in court for giving that information to members of the public. So information is drying out in that sense. That's why I say it's so important that if I say I will not reveal who my source is, that it will not be revealed because I need to protect these people. So they give me information. Okay, and even then I say, you know, like I want quality information. I need to look at it, I need to see who's what's been stamped by who, things like that. Um, and unlike some of them, I, I don't know, you know, um, maybe because I'm difficult, or not just that I've been a journalist for 23 years, but I've never told any of my bosses who my sources were. And they've never asked. <laughs> because for me, it's, I'm sorry, I can't tell you. You know, you want the story, we have to run it. You just have to trust me. You know, I've been here this long. I'm not here to screw the company over or anything like that, you know. You know my track record in the office and the work that I've done. Uh, so I have never revealed my source and they've been okay with it. They've always been behind me. Um, I must ask a question. 